Why don't you guys in the front row get us started? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our meeting tonight. Um, I will need a motion to adopt tonight's agenda. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And we'll need a motion to appro approve our board meeting minutes from April 3rd. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Go on. Second. Thank you. Uh, are there any additions, corrections, or anything to note? Yes, I actually wanted to make one correction. Um, the Orange County School Board meeting is actually going to be on Wednesday, May 1st, not the 7th. Thank you, Lindsay. Thanks, Caroline. Um, okay, so I will um, ask that we approve the board meeting minutes as amended. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great, thank you. And since it looks like we have some fun stuff coming up tonight, let's get right to it. We'll start with Ms. Bosch. That's never happened before. <laughs> uh, good evening, thank you. Superintendent O'Hara, um, Board of Education, thank you for having me. I am going to try to be as quick and as brief as I can on all the things I have to report out so we can obviously get to the main event. Okay, um, so an update from our green team, Next Trex Challenge. Uh, we are up to 571 pounds of plastic, um, which has us right on track to meet the 1,000 pound goal for November. Uh, we need to remind everyone to keep on bringing in plastic wrap and film. We cannot slow down in our efforts to get where we need to be. Please be sure that the plastic wrap and film is free of food residue. Uh, community members may bring in clean film and wrap to our vestibule during school hours. Uh, PBIS, we had another uh, PBIS assembly on April 5th. As well, the students that earned their way into the responsible category for last month, uh, the month of March, will be rewarded with extra recess, weather permitting, tomorrow. And it looks like that will happen. It was supposed to happen last week, but we've had a lot of rain. Um, okay. PTA and SEPSA. The PTA is hosting a family bingo night next Friday uh, at 6.30 at CES. Thank you to everyone that has been contributing themed baskets to help this be a successful event. I'm really looking forward to that, and so is my family. Uh, the SEPSA is planning a fundraising event called a buddy -a -thon that will kick off in early May with two anti-bullying assemblies. Uh, students will hear more about that event then, and then the families will receive information regarding that fundraiser as well. It's something different that we haven't done before, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, okay, March slash April updates, because I haven't been here in a bit when, since March. Um, Frozen Kids performance was a success. They put on two performances here at the Academy on March 20th. There was a great turnout for those performances. The play was so well done. Uh, the performers were amazing. And of course, Mrs. Scally continues to outdo herself in finding opportunities for her students and directing an amazing production. Uh, thank you to Mrs. Scally and all the students that performed in Frozen. <laughs> Excellent. Such a spirited crowd tonight, I love it. Uh, <laughs> solar eclipse, I was so excited for the solar eclipse. Uh, the April 8th solar eclipse was awesome. The elementary school was able to take our three through five students outside um, with their provided eclipse glasses to view the eclipse. Uh, many students were also picked up by their families to view the eclipse at home as well. Uh, all students, whether they were staying or being picked up, uh, were provided with glasses. Thank you to Mrs. Nagler and Teleview for donating the glasses for the entire district. Um, it really was an awesome event, um, and uh, we really loved getting outside and just seeing the reactions on kids' faces. I mean, it was very, very cool. So thank you for that. <laughs> Who is 
pretty cool. uh, community and career connections. Uh, we've had a bunch recently, so I thought I would touch on those. The elementary school continues to find opportunities for community and career connections. Over the past month, we have had the sheriffs in the building to provide examples of how they use robots and robotics in their jobs, which connects to the robotics program at CES. So Ms. Rendy had uh, actually worked with Officer Donato to get some officers in uh, with various robots that they use, including a throwbot, which is very cool because you literally just throw it into a crime scene and then you can see what's going on inside without being in danger. Or finding out if there is danger. Do we proceed or do we hang back a minute? Um, so that was very cool uh, and uh, there was a presentation in the makerspace. Um, simultaneously coupled with the earthquake, which was not the plan, but it kind of was uh, you know, a dramatic effect with our the robots in the building. Um, the Warwick Humane Society came in and brought a couple of kittens to visit the third grade who did a collaborative art and writing project that Mrs. Downick actually set up um, where uh, the art teacher and the third grade teachers collaborated and students were illustrating cats that are up for adoption in the Warwick Humane Society. And then the teachers in the classroom were having students write persuasive pieces to get people to adopt the cats highlighting some of their traits and things that make them lovable and why people should adopt them. Um, it was a great project and it ended with the Humane Society. So they were actually cats from the Humane Society that they wrote about and they like posted some of the kids writing. It was really nice. Um, the pre-K uh, have been learning all about animals all year long and a local farmer uh, that I believe Mrs. Cassetta set up um, came and brought a chicken, a bunny, and a goat for the students to see in person and interact with. And they have been learning about all kinds of animals. So then they got to learn a little bit about uh, farming and you know some of the animals that you might find on a farm. Okay, we had several events occur over this past weekend specifically. Um, and many of our talented CES students were involved. We had five students attend and compete in the Special Olympics in Middletown. Uh, Mrs. Loftus is the coordinator and um, she was there and she's going to share more about that experience and uh, some of the te uh, students and coaches that attended. Um, they did a great job. We also had several CES musicians attend NISMA this past weekend. Uh, Kaden Williams played the trombone, Cameron McLaughlin played the trombone, Nolan Doherty played the euphonium. Uh, Gabriel Burgos played the flute, and Hazel Telesco, which was our only third grader competing, that's very young to compete at NISMA, uh, she played the piano. So uh, um, thank you to Mr. Sparkman and Mrs. Scali for always supporting our young musicians. They all received either outstanding or excellent ratings, which are the two highest ratings that you can get on a solo performance at NISMA. So they did a wonderful job as well. Lastly, we had our Odyssey of the Mind Division I team, who's sitting front and center, attend the New York State competition in Syracuse after they placed second in the Region 5 competition in March here in Orange County. Uh, the students were joined by their very supportive families and, of course, their awesome team coaches. I'd like to introduce Mrs. Victoria Brink and Mrs. Audra Cutler, our Division I Odyssey of the Mind coaches, to talk a bit <coughs> about Odyssey and introduce their team who will be performing their skit for you tonight. But before I turn it over to them, um, I'm going to open it up for any questions about my report and then we'll get to them. Are there any questions for me? Does anyone have any questions? Mm -mm. No, we just want to see the performance. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Perfect. Good evening, Mrs. O'Hara and members of the board. Thank you so much for having us tonight. We're so happy to be here and share about our amazing Odyssey of the Mind team. Our team began working in the <coughs> fall and each week we worked together and grew as a team. The members bring creativity, problem solving skills, humor and dedication to the team. At the beginning of our season, the students had to decide between five long-term problems to create a, an eight minute long skit. Our team chose to solve Rocking World Detour. Um, the team needed to create a performance about a rock band on, de on tour that takes an unexpected detour to another location. The students created their very own song, music, 
designed man, band merchandise <coughs> and used creative hairstyles, which you can see already. Everything that you see tonight has been completely designed and created by the team, including their dialogue and their script. We are so proud of them. And last weekend, like Mrs. Bosch said, they placed fourth at the state final competition out of 22 different school districts from all across New York. We hope that you enjoy their performance. We thank you for your support in making Chester's Odyssey of the Mind team and program a success. And we look forward to coaching the future Odyssey of the Mind team. Thank you both so much for all the time that you've dedicated to helping the team. Thank you. What time is it? We should have left 20 minutes ago. How am I supposed to do my hair in only 10 minutes? It's not always about your hair. Sawyer, you were supposed to set the alarm clock. Why do you keep messing up? It's not my fault we stayed up so late. Stop fighting, we have to get ready. Grab your instruments, we have to go. Wait, I need to grab my lucky guitar pick. You don't even play guitar. Yeah, well, I still need it, okay? Shh, that didn't happen. Did someone bring the merchandise? Yeah, it's right. Oh no, did I forget it? Yes. Oh. Well, it's a good thing that I remembered the merchandise. Here's we will put one on my stage for a fair goodbye song. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt the scheduled program. For $10.99, you could get your very own Open Minds poster. But don't stop there. You could also get an Open Minds overpriced t-shirt for $15.99. But wait, there's more. You cannot forget your $2 friendship bracelet. Don't forget to buy your own team member today. <sighs> we have to begin practicing before fans show up. Wait, I need to put in my dry shampoo. Used to be all different people, but now we are best friends. Then we made a band, and we'll play into the end. We travel the world together without any hairs. Um, she means hairs. Why did you do that? You knew that wasn't the line. Well, it's my hair, so don't you even. But it's our band. That's it. I'm done. You guys figure it out. I'm going back to bed. Why did she do that? She knew that wasn't the line. Why can't we all just cooperate? Why can't we all stop fighting? I'll sleep it off. Shh. It's a brainstorm. Where are we? Are those trees? No, it's broccoli. It's like Ariana's hair. Crazy. Where the what? Where are trees? Broccoli? You? Here in the imagination of one of you. Who are you? Whoever one of you wants me to be. This makes no sense. We have a show to get back to. We have a reputation to live up to. 
We cannot disappoint our fans again. What do you mean again? What do you mean we? It was you who disappointed our fans. We acted as if the alarm clock to wake us up. Yeah, but... Enough, Bernie. I think you were brought here to solve a problem. Welcome to the Mindscape of Imagination. The Mindscape? Yeah, keep up. Wait, I know I'm here. I have school suits off my back to get my lady guitar pick, and I forgot to throw it over my left shoulder, but I still need it. It's how lucky. Mu how much luck has it brought us so far? Just you wait. I don't think it was the song that brought you here. Then what brought us here? We were doing just fine. No, you keep blaming me for messing up. Well, it's your fault. There you go again. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Aren't we supposed to cooperate? We have to get back to the show so our fans don't get mad at us. We just said that we were friends, that is true. We were singing about Ariana losing hair. Don't bring my hair into this. You were losing hair? She already lost, lost her hair, now, now you came up. up. Okay, now that my hair is completely healed, how do you think you'll get back? I didn't think this far. Maybe we're brought here because we're fighting so much. We fight every day. Maybe we should all apologize so that we can get back to the show. Well, I did nothing wrong, so I'm not apologizing. We're never apologizing to you. If you guys don't apologize, you'll never get back to the show. Ever, 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 ever. When you were little, we used to play together, but that time seemed like forever ago. We grew up together, but now it feels like it's growing apart. I like my hair. Stop talking about your hair. We made this band spend more time together, forever, but at this point, it may not last that long. How can we fix this? Because I don't want it to end. Our feelings for each other should have ended. Let's start all over to make a fresh start. I can't imagine my life miles apart. Quick, apologize. All of it's will be waiting. I thought you should have went to bed earlier. I'm sorry, I should have set the alarm clock. I'm sorry, too. I should have helped you with the merchandise. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I should have stopped complaining about my hair. I'm sorry for being mean. Not really. <laughs> We're sorry. Not really. <laughs> Guys, I was thinking, maybe I shouldn't sing the song alone anymore. How about we all sing? Sure. Sure. Why not? Sure. We used to be all different people, but now we are best friends. Then we made a band, and we'll play until the end. We travel the world together without any cares. Our friendship will never break apart, because we all have one big part. We rock it out together forever. Now we're back in harmony. It's the brain. Storm again. <sighs> what just happened? Where are the broccoli trees? Maybe I should go check in on the band. Guys, the craziest thing just happened. Why should we care? You stormed out, didn't get to practice, and almost made us late for the show. I thought we all just apologized. You must have been hallucinating. How many root beers did you have last night? Seven. I drank all of yours. Oh, Sawyer, why? But maybe we should apologize. I'm sorry for storming out. I'm sorry for being rude to Ariana. And I'm sorry for drinking all your root beer. I'm sorry, too. I should not put my hair first. I should have put the band first. I'm so glad I have you as friends. Me too. Me three. Me four. Me five. I guess B B7. All right, now let's go perform for our fans. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four.
now that the stage has been cleared. Congratulations, everyone. One more big round of applause. I hope you'll try out again next year. You did fabulous, guys. Um, for those students, <laughs> um, for the students who need to be excused, we know there's probably homework or, or dinner waiting at home. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Flanagan, we're clearing the room. <laughs> every time. Yeah, every time. <laughs> You're used to this. <laughs> And now he's a fish up swimming upstream because yeah. everybody's going yeah. up. Yeah. The seniors are presenting. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Oh, what a great performance. Yeah, that was. I'm so happy I that know. we were able yes. to see that live and in person. Yeah. Did I log out, Nick? No, one more. I'll go to this in just a second. I'm going to have to turn that on up there. One of these days, I'm just going to cut my losses and leave before the <laughs> elementary school finishes. <laughs> but uh, thank you, everybody, for the opportunity to present tonight. Um, I just do have some, some friends here I'll bring up in just a couple of minutes here. Um, but I just wanted to go through a couple of highlights of my my presentation and just answer any questions before I, I bring up and transition to, to our group here. Um, so first and foremost, you know, we, we're excited, the prom is coming. Um, so we are encouraging everyone to buy their tickets right now so we can get a, a, a good, accurate head count. The prom has been tremendously successful the last couple of years. So we want to get a good head count on there. The cost of the prom, we managed to bring down uh, $15 this year. So it's down, it's, it's down to $80 per student. Um, which is probably one of the lowest proms you'll see in the county. We like to make our prom as, as affordable as it can be so our students can enjoy it. And, uh, and if someone is having trouble getting to the prom, we're always there to help and support them as well. So we'd like to know that in advance. Uh, we have a lot of prom is at Otter Kill Country Club on May 16th from 6 to 10 p.m. And we'll be having our traditional uh, mock accident assembly the morning of, where we work with the Town of Chester Police Department and Orange County Stop DWI to you know, kind of bring some education and awareness about making good decisions. Um, today's students, tomorrow's teachers, just wanted to give you an update as well. Our students have been well engaged and out observing teachers in the classroom. They actually uh, just went on an, a field trip yesterday where they went to the Mid-Hudson Regional Career Exploration Workshop, which was held in Hurleyville at the Performing Arts Center. And it actually involved all the TSTTs from Orange and Sullivan County. So the, it involved a, a little bit of a college fair. Representatives were there from SUNY Orange, SUNY Cortland, SUNY Sullivan, Mount St. Mary, SUNY Ulster, and SUNY New Paltz are colleges that do participate with, um, with TSTT for scholarship. Um, we also, they, they had a uh, Chase did a financial literacy workshop, and there was a presentation on, uh, uh, by, by the United Way and a group discussion. So there was a lot of really great things, and I, I'm really excited about this program that we've continued it on and, and, and looking forward to its continued growth here at Chester Academy. Um, I wanted to bring awareness that our SEPSA is actually having a book fair. We haven't had a book fair in Chester Academy in a long time. So SEPSA is sponsoring a book fair the week of May 6th through the 10th uh, for the students in the, the library makerspace. And we are, um, we're also gonna open it up for two night events on the Wednesday the 7th and Thursday, I mean on, on Tuesday the 7th and Wednesday the 8th. Um, they're gonna do a, a couple of evening hours that will communicate out to everybody. And one of them will be before the middle school concert so that people will have an opportunity to go through the book fair while they're getting ready to go to the concert. So it's a nice, a nice event. Also, um, a great fundraiser coming out, and, and Mrs. Nagler has been, uh, been really a, a lot of help in helping us sponsor with this. There's going to be an empty bowls fundraiser on May 6th. 
and that's in coordination with the National Honor Society and the Chester Food Pantry um, about, uh, you know, about, about just trying to raise some money. The food pantries have been really strained and we want to be able to su continue to support our, our friends and our, our community members. So there'll be opportunities to get a handcrafted ceramic bowl that's been created by some of our most talented art students uh, for a $20 donation or to just come in and get a little bowl of soup and, and so on. So more information coming. I'll be sending home a flyer tomorrow, actually, so people can be on the lookout for a school messenger with that information. Um, you saw in my report that I had our the, the fun testing schedule that comes up with, with, with middle school especially. There's a lot of information on there about middle school testing, but I did need to add to that because we've been notified that we are we have luckily been selected for field testing in New York State, as many schools are. Um, so at the high school level, we'll be participating in uh, geometry and chemistry and in the, e in the middle school CBT, we'll be doing eighth grade ELA, which we've already had the actual eighth grade ELA CBT here, but now we'll be doing a field test later on in the year. There's not a defined day that they have to happen. They just give us a range and tell us when it needs to be done. So they kind of say, you'll be getting your materials soon and you have to get it done by this. So we're, we'll, we're, we're eagerly <laughs> awaiting our materials from the state. Um, just a reminder that our eighth grade moving up ceremony is on June 24th and our graduation is on Tuesday, June 25th. It's a little different in the calendar, it's not on a Friday night. Um, there is a rain date on the calendar, but I am really pushing, it is hard, a lot of people coordinating, people coming in from out of town. The goal is to have graduation on the 25th. Um, so whether it be on the field, whether it be inside, we can generally accommodate everyone that wants to come to graduation. We haven't been turning anybody away, so that, that, that's a great thing. Uh, we'll be able to do that, so my letter will be out later this week as well. Along with the, uh, our concerts are coming up. The middle school concert is on the 8th and the high school concert is on the 9th. Uh, a big congratulations to the cast and crew of Greece. Uh, one, one of our, our Greece stars, Danny Zuko, is here out in the audience tonight. Um, Michael Miller. Uh, the, the performance was outstanding. It really was great. The voices were amazing and uh, just a true classic that they were able to really take home. And Michael's final performance here at Chester Academy did an awesome job. So well done. Um, also, some, some exciting college news. I've heard some rumors um, that Ariana Aziz has been accepted and is, is going to NYU. So that's an exciting thing. And Ariana's here. And Ariana Torres has not told me where she's going yet, but I'm going to get that hot scoop for next month. And Michael Miller is actually uh, looking at the Potsdam Crane School of Music, which is awesome as well. So very cool. Um, and, and actually, I had one student really excited yesterday came up to me in the hallway Bianca Newman I'm so proud of her she was accepted at Howard and she was going to check it out this weekend so our students are doing great things um, getting accepted at a lot of really top colleges so so well done um, for our juniors we're taking them to a college fair on a week from today on the 25th the SUNY College Fair at SUNY New Paltz Mrs. Sterneman takes the kids each year with uh, Miss McKenzie they go up and it's kind of as they're, they're getting started now in the college process all the SUNYs are there. It's their first opportunity to really get out there and talk to those colleges. Um, they've had that, that junior parent information night, and once again, we'll follow up as we, we get into their senior year with the senior parent information night to start the year, get information out about the FOSFA, about financial aid um, for, for those with, that, that are concerned about, um, you know, possibly how this could work for them with, you know, working with an IEP. We have an access VR night. There's a lot of different options, and uh, Mrs. Sternerman will be able to work with you. If you have any questions, obviously, with your junior or your senior, you can reach out to her or, or myself, and we're happy to help. Um, but, you know, on to, on to the main event here of, of, of the evening, which, which is exciting. I'm going to bring up Mr. Aguilar and a few of our, our seniors here. As I introduced, we have Ariana Torres, Ariana Aziz, and Michael Miller. Come on up, guys. And, and Mr. Aguilar, who I'm going to be transitioning this off to here, as they have uh, done something really cool. They, they were on the senior trip to Disney, and they came back, as they said they would, to report and tell you a little bit about their experiences. So I'm going to, what do I press present here? Yeah, Ariana knows a lot more than me on this. I'm just going to let her take it over. And they're going to tell us a little bit about the trip. Welcome. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for having us. So... Um, my name is Ariana Aziz. I'm the president of the class of 2024. This is Ariana Torres, a vice president of the class of 2024. And our lovely member, Michael Miller. 
Um, so we're here to talk about the recap of our great trip. Um, so if you'd like to direct your attention to our um, presentation. Our first day was Epcot. Um, that was like, we were right on the go as soon as we got off the plane. We left the airport, dropped our stuff off at the hotel, and went right to Epcot. And it was so, like, it was so amazing. It was honestly one of my favorite days. Do you guys like to say anything? <coughs> um, about Epcot? Yeah. Like, I, I loved Epcot. This was my first time going to Disney, first time going on a plane. Um, I know. And uh, it was just very, very exciting. It was a little overwhelming almost because, like, Half the people that went on the trip, um, I grew up with since kindergarten, and like making this like big step, going to a whole other, like another state, and like being able to go to Disney for the first time is a really big thing, especially t for me because I'm like now a Disney adult. Catch me at Disney every day, um, and I was just really happy to spend like these four days with like all the senior class that went. It was really nice. Yeah. Um. I personally liked Epcot because you get to experience like all different places around the world. Like you take a few steps and you're in a different country and I think that's like the really cool part of Epcot and why a lot of people want to go to Epcot for like their first day. I think it was a good day because it's more relaxing and because we had just gotten off the plane we could just stroll around and like sightsee instead of like rushing to ride. Yeah, so that was a really good pick for the um, first day. And it started us off with a bang on our trip. We all came back very tired, but we were on to the next day, which was, oh, I skipped the slide, um, Hollywood Studios. <laughs> so um, we split Saturday in half. We did Hollywood Studios in the first half and Magic Kingdom in the second. And um, as you can see, it was really fun. Um, personally, I do wish we got some more time at Hollywood Studios, but there's so much to do at Disney and Universal. and. We, had, we tried to get everything in um, the four days that we had, and I think we did a good job of balancing everything. I loved it there, and I'm sure <coughs> you guys loved it there too. So on to the second half of our day, Magic Kingdom. That was, as like you can see, it's so beautiful there. It's so um, uplifting and exciting, and the rides there are great, very nostalgic. Um, so it was a good way to end our day, and we got to see the fireworks at night, which was so amazing, like the music and everything. It was just a great experience, and all of the seniors together, it just felt really nice to have everyone in one spot watching the fireworks, which was very enjoyable. And then on to our third day, we did one day at Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure. And we had a park hopper pass, which allowed us to go in between the two parks um, throughout the day. And it was, it was really cool, very different from Disney, but in a good way. Lots of fun rides, um, <coughs> lots to experience there. Um, it was really great. Do you guys want to say something about Universal? Um, yeah, I think that Universal was definitely my favorite place um, because Disney is like it's beautiful and like Magic Kingdom was like probably my favorite Disney park but Universal you actually get to like feel like the thrilling ride and like see all the cool like different animations that they do there so I enjoyed Universal. I like Disney more but Universal <laughs> was great. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah so that was pretty much our day there. Lots of different rides. Um, and then we wrapped up the trip with Animal Kingdom on our last day before we head out to the airport and this, um, this park was very cool. There weren't as many rides, but there was a lot to experience and a lot to see. My favorite was the safari and like seeing Pandora. And we even were late for our bus. Me and Ariana were stuck on um, the trolley in the safari because an ostrich decided to stand in the middle of our <laughs> path. <laughs> so, and, and a rhino, yes. Yeah, it was yeah, they decided yeah. to stand in our path, so we didn't make it to the bus to get back to the hotel. But Miss Reva stayed with us, and she waited very patiently <laughs> for us to, for our group to get to the hotel to leave for the airport. We weren't late for our flight, but it was a very fun experience, and there were a lot of laughs, a lot of fun memories that will hold for, uh, for with us forever. We even saw a baby elephant on the um, left bottom, 
was so tiny under the mom, which was really cute. But Animal Kingdom was great. Pandora is beautiful. Everything about it was nice. And we just wanted to thank you guys for allowing us to have the opportunity for an amazing senior trip. And we hope you guys allow the next upcoming classes to go. Um, we enjoyed every minute of it and made memories that would last forever. And yeah, we enjoyed our time there and we hope that the other classes will in the future. Thank you for letting us yeah. go. I do want to add in that like this trip was like just so unforgettable in the ways of like, I would never be able to, um, I guess you could say like, talk with a teacher there like I would here. It was such a big and heavy bonding experience that we were able to um, talk to our teachers about favorite rides. You know, that's not something you would do in, you know, geometry or something. And I think it was really special because we were able to just really get together for the whole four days. Um, and just talk together and have fun, not have to worry about schoolwork. Um, and it was, it was just really a lot of fun. And it was special for me, especially because um, on our second day, right when we were about to head out for Magic Kingdom, I got my acceptance letter from Crane School of Music. Um, so I think that was very special to me. Um, and it was just really special that we all got to spend it together. Thank you. Well, thank you all for coming and sharing your experience and just watching you relive the moments of your trip. It, it's so heartwarming for us because, you know, as parents ourselves, we love to see those memories being made. And one day you'll be our age and you'll look back fondly on those experiences and you may be in touch with some of your classmates still. And even if you're not, those are, these are the things that are, are letting you experience the world in a different light and outside of your normal everyday experiences here in Chester. So I'm so happy that you were able to go. I'm so happy that you all took something different away from it. Um, and you experienced it with friends that you may have just made recently or like Michael said, friends that you've known for years. And knowing that you're coming to the end of your senior year soon and you'll be graduating, these are the kind of memories that will, will bond those friendships for a long time to come. So thank you for coming back and sharing that with us. Thank you for thank having you. us. Thank you, and, uh, and I have to say, in 22 years of education, I've heard a lot of excuses for students being late to things. I've never heard an ostrich <laughs> as the excuse before, so well done. Uh, but truly, and, and I agree with what Michael said in terms of you know, the, the whole idea that you can, you can connect with people on things you had no idea about. I mean, last year, you know, I, when I went on the trip, Mr. Aguilar went on this year, and he may make some comments on it, you know, bonding with kids, because, you know, with Dylan Perez, because I was an action figure junkie, and so was he. And like, you, you just, those are things you don't learn about people. Um, so I just popped back up here to see if anybody had any questions. Does anyone have any questions on Mr. Flanagan's report? Nope, excellent report. Thank, Thank you. you. Do you need this up? Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, Superintendent O'Hara. Board of Education President Nagler. Uh, just to piggyback again on the, on the senior trip, I want to start off with, again, with, with the positive, because again, you can't make this up. Uh, I was very fortunate enough uh, while on duty and having a meal with our kids as uh, I was able to observe about 15 of our seniors dining together. At the conclusion, an elderly couple came up to me and shared with me the following. Can I talk to you for a minute, sir? Yes, of course, is everything okay? Do you have a couple minutes? I want to talk about your group. I just want you to know my wife and I sat and observed. We witnessed how 15 young people were able to be calm, had mild conversations, and most of all, enjoying themselves. We were blown away how respectful they were to one another, 
and the surroundings. At the conclusion, they cleaned up. And, and this is you know, a, a quote, as I, I remembered from them. They took pride in themselves and the school district they represent. It was a pleasure to see and observe. And that just blew me away. I made sure I, I text Mr. Flanagan. That's our kids. You gave them the opportunity. They rose to the occasion, and they will continue. But it, it was just phenomenal. Uh, some of the things from the trip, myself, uh, again, being, uh, you know, even though I was away from my, my kids, I was a proud dad. Uh, just watching these young people get together. And uh, in my report, you were able to see uh, an example of one young man who went uh, far and above. Um, and, and that's Ryan Farley. Ryan Farley took his best friend and basically was his personal assistant, helping him throughout the airport with uh, his luggage and making sure that he got on all the rides and he got everything in terms of was never left by himself. So for Ryan Farley, you know, and, and I got to sit next to him on the trip, and we talked about so much, and he's got a great story to tell. But for Ryan Farley, going way above uh, and beyond the duty of a senior, making sure no one was left behind and or participating. And our seniors, no one was left behind. Everyone got together. Everyone went in their own little group, but they had a great time. And that was important to them. And... I know that's important to this board because, again, you gave them the opportunity. And they were amazing, including uh, James Kelm, who needed a bottle of water at 1.30 in the morning, or uh, Mr. James, who needed a battery charger at 1 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> you know, asking, can I borrow from some? No, take mine. But uh, I will tell you there were other districts there, and they were nowhere close to our kids in our district. So I'm very proud of our kids. as as we all are. So thank you again for that opportunity. Uh, you have my board report. Um, briefly, I shared with you from the third quarter uh, progress report. Uh, I just want to piggyback on Mr. Doucette made a comment uh, at the last board report in terms of our kids getting more and more involved, going to the study sessions and getting the job done and getting completed. So I, 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 I do want to say that our kids, again, have been able to do that and uh, do it in a timely fashion. So again, kudos to the kids. Uh, in our uh, Hambos, Helping Hambos, uh, you see that Gabriela Galvanez on the bus saw a student in need, went right over, sat, to that, sat with that individual until the ride completed and made sure that individual was okay. Again, perfect example of our kids helping out one another. Aiden Delo. Uh, in school, someone was saying something negative about another person. He shut it right down. He said, don't talk like that. That's not what we do. Again, just a perfect example of our kids understanding respect. And I want to leave you with our uh, cafeteria staff led by uh, Ms. McFarland. I want to recognize Kathy Bell, Ms. Johannes, and Ms. Motes. In, in terms of seeing something, saying something. While in the cafeteria, they went to the aid and assisted a student. And they made that student feel like a rock star at the conclusion. And it's just appreciative that we're all getting involved and making sure that our kids are okay and addressing situations when we see something. So uh, thank you, Ms. McFarland and her team. And again, to conclude, uh, our recognition for our uh, accolades for some of our students, Robert Berkeley, uh, recognized uh, for basketball in Section 9, the Jenkins brothers, and most of all, uh, Coach Marsilio for his milestone, but also recognized for Coach of the Year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aguilar. Thank you. And I have to say, when you said you're, you're proud of the students, we're all proud of the students. Um, you know, knowing that we're able to participate in whether it's any type of extracurricular or sport or a trip to, to Disney, knowing with confidence that our students will go out and represent us Absolutely. with pride um, is, is extremely meaningful. Um, and that truly comes from within them but a lot of that comes from the role models that they have and the examples that they 
are given to follow. Um, so thank you for, for being one of those role models. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Aguilar on his report? Thank you. Thank, thank you. you again, everyone. All right, now we'll turn it over to Ms. O'Hara. Good evening, everyone. As a component of this evening's budget presentation, I'll be presenting the elementary, middle school, high school, and special, special education programs. Um, as always, it's our district goal to create a fiscally responsible budget that effectively addresses the needs of the district while considering the concerns and input of the community. The budget supports the Chester School District vision and mission. So we'll begin with the elementary school. And based on our pre preliminary registration figures, uh, our enrollment is anticipated to increase slightly at CES for 24-25. And the 24-25 budget, staffing has increased by one full-time staff member to support enrollment in special education support services at the elementary level. CES enrollment is expected to be approximately 400. And so our student programs are supported by 25 classroom teachers, nine educational specialists, that's special education, reading, academic intervention support, math, academic intervention support, 4.5 special area teachers, and that's because we have some staff that are shared. That's PE, physical education, music, and art. School nurse, uh, 1.5 school psychologists, again, shared between the two buildings. Uh, one full-time social worker, we have our STEM teacher on special assignment and a student behavioral support specialist. Specifically, the continuation of the TOSA position, that STEM teacher on special assignment, and you've seen many of these on social media, it's supporting instruction in robotics, engineering design, New York Next Generation uh, learning standards across content areas with problem-based learning, and certainly career-connected learning applications, which you heard Mrs. Boach speak to this evening. In addition, uh, the budget supports co-curricular activities uh, maintained at their current levels. So providing students with opportunities that we certainly saw um, the impact this evening for our students with Odyssey of the Mind, band and chorus, intramural sports, and also field trips which provide our students with opportunities for real world application outside of the classroom and those career connections which are so impactful to the learning experience for our students. That brings us to the middle school. Enrollment is expected to increase slightly for 24-25. Uh, the middle school is served by 12 classroom teachers. Educational support and AIS staff are shared between the middle school and high school at Chester Academy. And special area teachers are also shared between the middle school and high school Chester Academy programs. In response to inflation, we have increased support for educational materials and supplies. Uh, and that is to ensure continued access to resources for our students. The majority of this cost is dedicated to consumable resources utilized by our students, so those are items purchased year to year. And textbook allocations include, obviously, textbooks, but also software and other consumables. Support for extracurricular activities has been maintained for the upcoming school year in this budget. It ensures students have access to enriching opportunities beyond the classroom. And our commitment to providing impactful middle school assemblies continues with funding directed toward core programs or experiences such as our moving up recognition ceremonies, character education, social emotional learning, and anti-bullying initiatives, to name a few. That brings us to the high school. High school enrollment is expected to decrease slightly to 321 students, that's approximate, from Chester and Greenwood Lake. This is served by 22 subject area teachers. Shared staff, as mentioned previously, between the middle school and the high school programs is compi comprised of 13.5 special area teachers. School nurse, our workplace learning coordinator, which supports all of the internship programs for our juniors and seniors. Social worker, 1.5 psychologists, three guidance counselors, and a full-time librarian. Uh, we realign our scheduling and staffing so that we're able to increase AP and college credit opportunities for students at the high school level. We currently, in this budget, would be able to support six sections of SUNY Orange and SUNY Oswego classes in the subject areas of English, math, US history, 
Spanish, and tech, providing our students up to 37 college credits. We also offer AP classes in biology and physics. In addition, the budget supports electives in psychology, accounting, history, sociology, marketing, statistics, art, robotics and engineering, family and consumer science, and sports media. Extracurricular opportunities include over 24 clubs and activities specific to grades 9 through 12. Accelerated classes in middle school, which allow students to enter ninth grade with high school credits in foreign language, living environment, and algebra. Our Safe School Ambassadors program would continue to train 40 students, six staff, and six staff in conflict resolution, supporting a safe, welcoming, and positive school climate here at Chester. The budget also includes enhancement in curriculum offerings, uh, inclusive of financial literacy, advisory with the Seven Mindsets program, project-based learning and robotics, civic engagement course specifically designed for eighth grade students. And additionally, we would be able to support expanded opportunities for our students to achieve the seal of civic readiness and the seal of biliteracy. Mr. Brennan will speak briefly on the budget breakdown. Yeah, the, the one thing on, on page one that I want to point out is a, a pretty significant decrease in the pre-K teaching salaries. That's not to say that we're scaling back or reducing the program at all. That is just to recognize the funding source. So the costs and the revenue for that program have been moved into the federal projects section of our, our book. Um, on page two, you're going to see some decreases in the areas of supplies. That's really just a sort of a bounce back from a, a very significant increase in the funding for those areas in the current year. So we're, we're actually moving back toward the historical cost perspective with, of course, the little bit included in costs for the cost of products. Inflation has hit just about every part of everyone's home budget. It does this, has the same effect on the school district budget. And of course, on, on the next page, there really isn't a whole lot to show there. There is one highlight. You'll see a large amount for BOCES tuition in Hoc Ed. That's sort of an old term. It's the CTEC program in which we send students to both regular ed and special ed, as well as some students that we um, pay for their, their program there, even though they're enrolled full time in a private school. Thank you. So that brings us to our special education program, which services students that have been identified to have special learning needs by the Committee on Special Education, or CSE, and approved by the Board of Education. These services are pr prescribed by comprehensive federal and state requirements that must be met for each student. Special education is, includes a continuum of services ranging from related services such as speech, OT, PT, and counseling to full-time residential placements that care for the physical, emotional, and educational needs of our students. Our in-district services in special education include speech, counseling, OT, PT, and vision services. Also included in the budget, content support, which is additional classes that support the learning curriculum for special education students. Integrated co-teach, which we continue to expand, and that's for inclusion support. Special classes such as self-contained classes specifically designed for our special education students. One-to-one -one support for students with greater needs and also health accommodations that range from a simple health plan to one-to-one -to -one nursing support. The out-of-district services are utilized for students who, whose needs exceed the scope of programs that we offer in-house. This includes BOCES, alternative or alternate public school setting, uh, private day school for specialized educational services not offered at an area BOCES, and residential placement for students requiring around-the-clock support and services. The cost of providing educational services to our most needy students represents a significant portion of our total budget for 24-25. The expenses associated with providing these high cost services are, are partially offset by excess cost aid from New York State and federal grants. And with regard to the expenses associated with special education. Here you'll see a decrease in the nursing services. That's really a reflection of the 
increase we anticipated for the current year. The full amount that was budgeted won't be needed for to service our students this year. And we really analyzed what those needs are going to be for the next year. And assuming no significant changes in population, that's our best estimate there. One of the areas of growth that we've seen has been in mm -hmm. outside placements for the severely needy students in which we have, as the superintendent pointed out, have to outsource some of those services. You will see a large increase in the BOCES tuition line. That is in, in a large part due to move in student enrollment that have not been present in the last years and are coming to us this year and moving up from preschool this year, next year. Thank you. So additional budget information and updates, including this presentation, are available on the district website under Board of Education budget. And again, uh, the May 21st, uh, May 21st is our budget vote and school safety capital project referendum and a vote for two Board of Education seats. So that brings us to the presentation on our safety capital project. So as was recently presented, as I bring this up, at the March 13th Board of Education meeting uh, was an overview of this. This presentation will include uh, financial implications for the taxpayer associated with the capital project referendum. So this would be included on the ballot. The whole purpose for this capital project is in addition to the safety items included in the budget, this particular capital project strengthens and improves measures already in place, uh, ensuring the overall safety and security posture of the district, mitigating risks, and ensuring certainly the well-being of our students, staff, and visitors. So the capital project includes expanding partitions and doors in the elementary school cluster areas to strengthen secure zones, strengthen and secure zones, and facilitate efficient emergency response at approximately 445,000. And as the presentation progresses, I'll explain further um, what the total is of the safety capital project referendum and the implications, excuse me, the impact to the local taxpayer. Secondly, constructing transactional spaces for visitor screening at Chester Elementary School and Chester Academy. And this is to establish a dedicated specific entry point for enhanced visitor management into our buildings and enhanced security screening procedures. 645,000 for this particular transactional space, both at Chester Elementary School and at Chester Academy. Um, you can see the designs, and certainly if you bring up the presentation on the website, you can zo uh, zoom in to get a better idea of the transformation of those entryways to each of the buildings. Integrating exterior door contacts with the security system we already have in place. This enables automated notifications via email and text when a door is, remains open uh, beyond a predetermined setting or threshold, and that enhances our perimeter security at 52,000. Implementing digital accessibility for classroom doors. So moving from keyed doors or keying into a given access door uh, to moving on to digital. And this enhances obviously our security and streamlines access control measures for staff and authorized personnel at a cost of 387,000. It also includes inso installing in one dispatch throughout exterior locations, and that is to provide immediate access to life-saving equipment, expediting, expediting our ability to um, respond to emergency situations. And these would cost 84,000. Applying attack-resistant film on designated areas for enhanced security and that obviously significantly impedes unauthorized entry attempts and enhances our overall facility safety and security measures, $54,000. An emergency response and control center. This is to coordinate our support operations in-house during incidents, ensuring efficient management of resources and personnel, noted at $84,000. So all in, the project and cost for the safety capital project, strengthening safety throughout the district 
is 1,867,000. What does that mean? It's important to note uh, the cost for the project is related uh, to borrowing costs, which are el eligible for New York State building aid at 67.7%, according to the 24, uh, 2024 budget proposal. So the net cost to the local taxpayer, and again, this presentation is included on the website for your review, based on the average home in Chester and the current 2023 tax rate is approximately $16.50. So this is specifically to uh, bond this for 15 years at 3.5%. So over that 15 years, the total cost to the taxpayer over 15 years for all of these improvements to our safety and security would be $248 over 15 years. And again, an annual cost of $16.50 for these strengthening uh, improvements. So this will be included on the ballot uh, for voter approval at the budget vote on May 21st. Again, included on our website for your further review, I included on the ballot as a separate referendum. Thank you. Since we started the budget discussion process with the Board of Education and the community, we've talked about all of the items that we've included in the budget, both staffing, supplies, materials, services. The final presentation is how do we pay for all that? for dramatic effect. Yeah. <laughs> Did it work? Yeah. I've got everybody on the edge of their seats. Okay, so we're going to start at the top. As when I say the top, that's of course in, in Comptroller's Budget Code order, not in any other logical order that people outside of the accounting world recognize. But it's probably the one thing that people are most interested in, and that is taxes taxes and what is it going to cost me and my local home? Well, as people mostly know that the budget, the taxes for the, the levy is capped at 2%. That's only one factor in the tax cap calculation. So the end result year to year is, I, I'm now saying almost never 2%. I used to say it was never 2% until one time it was actually 2%. <laughs> <clears throat> so some of the other factors, um, one thing I can tell you is that this is, is clearly far below the rate of inflation over the last, now this will be our third year of a budget where the cap is significantly lower than the cost of inflation, and that does add up over the years. So some of the other factors, and we'll go into the full chart of this, are the consumer price index, capped at 2%. That adds almost $400,000 year to year. So that is the single biggest factor. There is a tax-based growth factor. That's just a measurement of what your property values are within the, the school district boundaries as it compares to the state overall. So if you, compared to the entire state, haven't moved at all, this factor would be zero. We're actually at 0.52%. We've seen higher, we've seen lower. Um, a, but that is a good sign for your property values here in Chester. It shows that among the whole state, we are growing more quickly. Now, there is a small increase in the pilots, payment in lieu of taxes. That's what we bill for the commercial properties that have <laughs> entered an agreement with the Industrial Development Agency to prolong the time in which their assessment increases to full value. So year to year that inc increases either 10 or 5%. So that's providing another $15,000. Uh, there is a capital levy. Now this is an offset 
of the tax cap for any voter-approved capital project. Now, Ms. O'Hara just talked about the capital project proposal on the ballot. That is not included in this amount because the borrowing wouldn't be included in the budget until the following year. So this is for any projects that were approved prior to what's on the ballot this year. And the biggest change there is the George Elster Bosey's capital project that was approved a little over a year ago. And this is our second of three increase years. Once we get through next year, then it'll plateau and be that same amount through the end of the borrowing cycle for their project. And we have an increase in costs of 169,000, but we are only able to exclude from the cap 103. So the total, in the total tax levy would be 20,741,351 dollars. That's an increase of 2.6%. <laughs> but as we see here, I've got a little note at the bottom, as a percent of the budget, that 2.6% increase only allows for a 1.5% budget to budget increase. Because of course, property taxes are not all of our revenue picture. Now this is a, a slide that I did two and a half weeks ago. And I was really hoping that before tonight I would have to scrap this whole page. Because it says the state budget isn't done. Well, I haven't been able to scrap this yet. So the April 1st deadline, uh, check your calendar. No, it's after April 1st. It went after. <laughs> <laughs> so there have been some proposals, the executive budget proposal, which is what we used to start our process of determining what the state aid revenues will be. It included something called removal of hold harmless. And I know everybody on the board has heard that term over and over. And those of you watching at home week after week have heard me say it a few times. That doesn't seem like that's going to make it. It looks like the legislature is putting back funding to restore hold harmless for those districts whose student population and programs don't really support the level of aid they've been getting over the years, but they don't want them to get any less. So they call that, they're holding those districts harmless from re receiving a reduction. I still can't, and I know a few of my colleagues and I have been talking about this, still can't get any sort of insight in what this final project or what this final budget is going to look like. So uh, unfortunately, we're very late in our budget process, and stay tuned is, I guess, the only answer we have there. But we are basing this budget on the best information we can get, both from the State Education Department, the Governor's Office, and those pieces that are coming out of each body in the legislature. So I think we've got the best information available, especially for Chester, because we were not hold harmless. Our aid actually did run with the formula, and we were receiving the aid we were supposed to receive all along for the students we serve. Uh, some of the, the smaller items that, that do jump out are day school tuition. We're seeing a reduction in the <laughs> population from Greenwood Lake that's choosing to come here on a tuition basis from that district. And what the reasoning there is, it may be a reduction in their own student population. But on the great side, we have, as I say here, a dramatic change in interest earnings. Um, we all know that interest rates have increased from just about zero to five and a half percent. We are <coughs> reaping the benefit of having cash in the bank for the first time in many, many years. So that we were able to increase the budget by almost $200,000 to recognize. The figures are, are shown here. It's a, a pretty significant increase in interest earnings, the decrease in the tuitions, and a pretty significant increase in state aid. So that will support all of the pieces of the budget that we've presented to you thus far. And unless we, uh, and graphically you can see, when I said that the, the tax levy mm. is actually reduced in its total driver for, we're, we're receiving more state aid, 
than we had in the past. The tax levy used to be in excess of 60% of total funding. It's actually now down to 58.8. So graphically, you can see that the state aid and the tax levy is really where we do focus because they, they are the, the big dogs in this funding stream. Um, we've said over and over that these presentations will be available on the website tomorrow morning. <laughs> So I thank all the board for sitting through my presentation over and over and uh, the <coughs> community and, and all of those that have come out to board meetings and followed at home. So the next things we, you'll hear from us will be just summaries of information you have seen or any changes that we've had to initiate in the budget items line by line so that there's no you know, shenanigans or, or other uh, chicanery that might come. We're going to demonstrate you know, if we do get a different aid picture, if we do recognize any expenditures that may have to change from what's been presented, that will be presented in summary format at our next meeting. And it's almost vote time. Well, thank you, Mr. Brennan, as always, for presenting a very clear picture mm -hmm. of what our budget looks like. Um, and, well, as clear, as, clear as, we can, <laughs> as we can expect at this yeah. point in time yes. um, without all of the puzzle pieces <laughs> being presented to us. Um, but, it, you know, we've always run a very tight ship in Chester. Um, and I think we, by being conservative and frugal, um, we have managed very well um, to have all of the resources that we we have going directly to students. Absolutely. Um, and not having, not bringing in excess that we can't use and making sure that we are using every dime that we have in the most appropriate and responsible manner. Um, and that comes in great part to you and your staff in your office and the administration for overseeing everything that is presented, making sure we are doing things on a logical basis, um, putting things in um, five-year replacement cycles, for instance, so we're not hit with large bills at any one given time. Uh, looking very closely at how we can refinance debt that we we may have, um, and, and every bit. I wouldn't suggest safe. that again. Well, not right <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, then there are things that come up that are out of your control, uh, things that change with the Albany budget, things like the, um, the BOCES budget that we have very little control over, but we, we have to manage through our budgeting process. Um, I think you've done a fantastic job of, of making everything very clear, and we do appreciate all of your hard work. Well, thank you, and, and I'm actually glad you mentioned the replacement cycle because we did recently pass a pretty big milestone. Uh, April of 2004, we moved into this building. So to celebrate 20 years, we were able to arrange for both an earthquake and, <laughs> you and made an it eclipse. memorable. <laughs> and an eclipse. So. Well, well, thank you for arranging that as well. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for um, Ms. O'Hara or Mr. Brennan on any of the budget presentations? Mm -hmm. No, thank you. It was very clear. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, moving on from all the numbers, because if your head's not spinning enough, um, we'll move to public comment. If anyone has any comments that they would like to address to the board on agenda items, now would be your opportunity. Seeing no one, we'll move to round table. Ms. O'Hara, what do you have for us tonight? Okay, just wanna uh, thank our CFSD parent advisory panel who recently met on Thursday, April 11th. We're extremely appreciative our, of our collaborative partnership uh, in support of continuous improvement in the district. So thank you so much for mm -hmm. your participation. Also, our March-April, this 
spanning between two months for this edition of our COFSD district newsletter, which is new this year, will be coming out soon. So this is, again, the first year and certainly uh, reflects our goal in expanding communication and highlighting uh, student opportunities and learning experiences at Chester. I do have some reminders. Uh, certainly, again, there will be a vote for two Board of Education seats on May 21st. Petitions for members of the community interested in running for a seat on the Board of Education are available in the district office and are due by April 22nd at 5 p.m. Please contact our district clerk, Lindsay Iannuzzi, to obtain a packet of information. Email information is also available on our district's website under the Board of Education tab, Meet Our Board, or you can simply call the main number of the school district and follow the prompts to the superintendent's office to find that information. And then lastly, as a reminder, uh, schools are closed next week on Tuesday, April 23rd, in honor of Passover. Our offices will be open. Thank you. That's it. All right. Thank you. Ms. Loftus, what do you have for us tonight? <laughs> well, I would just like to celebrate our Special Olympics event, which was this past Saturday. So a big congratulations to our athletes, fifth graders Justin and Miguel, fourth grader Sophia, third grader Eric, and second grader Eden. They were awesome that day. It really was a special day. Um, I want to say thank you to the coaches. Uh, we had a whole team. Some could be there that day, and some we were a split crew because OM was going on at the same time. But um, I want to say thank you to Mary Kate Bosch, uh, Lisa Ringel, Elaine Lynch, Sheila Conlin, Rebecca Davis, and it was an honor for, um, for me to be part of the coaching team as well. Uh, Justin Bourne was there all day as a volunteer. Audra Cutler was trained as a coach, was there all, all last year and was checking in with me via text because she was also at <laughs> OM. Um, and thank you to, uh, we had a bigger cheering squad than ever this year, so it was really appreciated. Um, all of the families of the athletes, um, some of you up here, Kathy O'Hara, Sandy Nagler, Kim DiCursio, Frank Sambats, SEPSA President Aaron Stamp. We really had such a crew there. Um, and it really made the day very special for the athletes, so thank you for being there. Um, athletes participated in three soccer and three basketball events in the morning. They were then seated and then participated in six again in the afternoon. I am happy to report that every one of our Olympians made it to the podium at the end of the day. So a good day was had by all. Thank you to Middletown. They did such a fabulous job the last two years. We have seen nothing like it. I know OU BOCES works hard with them. Every athlete had a poster there, um, a, like a giant game card. Um, thank you, uh, Kim DiCursio brought a bag of treats for each one of our athletes. That was really a special moment for them. So, so many highlights to the day, too many to name, but thank you to the district for your continued support of the event. It's really a special day, so. Well, it, it really was a phenomenal day to, to see um, the, all of the events and the excitement of the students who participated is infectious because they cheer each other on, Yes, even from different schools. They build friendships, there's such camaraderie. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about, you know, being grateful for everyone's successes. Mm -hmm. And to see the students sharing that is just rewarding beyond words because there really is just electricity that day. So thank you for you know taking that on. Um, it's something that was a long time coming to the district mm -hmm. and we started a little slow, but the program has built every year and I do hope that it continues going in this direction yeah, in too. the future. Thank you. Um, round table, we're gonna go down to Caroline. Do you have anything for us tonight? I, unfortunately, I do not have any updates. Usually the Orange County School Board will send their update within a week's time of the meeting. We did not get one yet so far, but as soon as I have it, I'll make sure to forward that on <coughs> to everybody. Uh, the next meeting is going to be in person on May 1st um, in Goshen at 7 p.m. Great. Thank you. Imani? Um, yeah, I just have a few things for tonight. Mm -hmm. um, 
first. I know the prom is coming up. You know, juniors are planning that, so I don't know too much about it. But I know they're nervous about the numbers. But um, if it's any peace of mind, like I have heard a lot of people talking about getting their tickets soon and their dresses and their suits and all that. So I still think it'll be a good turnout. So. Uh, and also, as mentioned, like the school play was amazing. Um, everyone did amazing. Um, Ariana Aziz, who was here earlier presenting, um, she raised over $400 for her garden project, for her like, senior NHS project, which is great. So we're really excited to see what she does with that. And then finally, um, Carnegie Hall was like two weeks ago now, I think. Um, it was an amazing experience. There was 160-ish people singing in one like ensemble. like. People from Alabama, California, Nebraska, like all over the country, and people from all ages too all came together. Um, the conductors we had were so helpful and were like strict and like serious, but also funny in their own way. And um, we learned a lot about music and about us as performers and singers, so it was a great experience. So yeah, that's all. Thank you. Great, thank you for bringing all that to us. Um, yeah, I was wondering how the um, Carnegie Hall event went off. So that's that's exciting. What a what a great opportunity. Thank you for sharing all of that. Um, if there's nothing else for roundtable, um, that will bring us to our consent agenda. I'd like to make a motion to approve 5.1, which is the Orange Osterbosi's 24-25 budget. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, then um, that will be approved, 5.1, to approve the um, OU BOCES budget for 2425. I'd like to make a motion to approve 5.2, which is to elect the OU BOCES board members of Jean Pavak and Michael Bello. Is there a second? A second. Uh, is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so we have agreed to elect OU BOCES board members, Jean Pavic and Michael Bello, uh, who are running unopposed to uh, be reelected. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to approve consent agenda 5.3 through 5.12. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, that will carry um, 5.3 to 5.12. Thank you. Um, is there any public comment? Anyone else who would like to bring anything to the board before we adjourn? Seeing no one. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. All right. That will close us out for the night. Thank you, everyone.